Hi dear students, let us begin with a new chapter, Digestion and Absorption, the first chapter from the unit Human Physiology, okay. See, digestion, the chapter is Digestion and Absorption, and here we are going to learn about the process Nutrition. What is this process nutrition? Nutrition means acquiring and utilization of energy rich nutrients. That process is called as nutrition. Intake of food. Why we need food? It is for energy production. The energy is needed for all the pathological activity, all the life activity. So first of all intake of food. And that ingested food materials are utilized for the life activity or for the energy production. The process is called as nutrition. Okay. So what is nutrition? Nutrition means acquiring and utilization of energy rich nutrients. That process is called as nutrition. Okay. And we humans, we are macrophagus. In macrophagus or in all advanced animals, the whole process of nutrition includes the following stages. The entire process of nutrition, the whole process of nutrition have the following stages. Let's see what are the different stages of nutrition. This whole process of nutrition includes ingestion. Digestion, absorption, assimilation, and ejection. So these are the different stages of the whole process of nutrition. So the whole process of nutrition, all macrophagous animals, all advanced animals, the whole process of nutrition includes ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. Okay. At the very beginning I told you, nutrition is the utilization of nutrients in our body for the energy production. When does this energy production takes place in our body? In humans, in our body, cells are the site of energy production. Energy production takes place in each and every cells in our body. Cells are the site of energy production. Then, for the production of energy, what are the requirements? For production of energy, these cells require oxygen as well as simpler nutrients. Oxygen as well as simpler nutrients are needed for energy production within the cell. But we are macrophagus. Our ingested food materials are complex food materials. So here the nutrition means the intake of food for the utilization within the cell for energy production. The process is called as nutrition. See here this process of nutrition load. Suppose this is the digestive tract in human body. Suppose this one is the digestive tract. This tube is the digestive tract. First step in nutrition is intake of food. Ingestion. Intake of food. This is the first step in nutrition. Intake of food. By this process, the food materials now reaches only in the lumen of our Alimentary canal. 
only in the lumen of our digestive tract, not to the cell. So by the process of ingestion, intake of food, the food reaches only to the lumen of our alimentary canal, only to the cavity or lumen of our alimentary canal, not to the cell. This is the first step, intake of food, ingestion. Okay. But this ingested food, now this ingested food is here in the lumen of our digestive tract. This injected food materials are complex food. We know their utilization takes place only within the cell for energy production. But this ingested food are complex food. Our cells can absorb only simpler nutrients. Our body cells can absorb only simpler nutrients. So for this absorption, because our cells can absorb only simpler nutrients, for the absorption, now these complex food substances, this ingested food are complex. After ingestion, these complex food materials are break down. These complex food materials are break down into simpler and absorbable form. These complex food materials are break down into simpler and absorbable form. This is the second step in nutrition. This stage is called as digestion. So what is this process? This process is called as digestion. Means breaking down of complex food substances into simpler and absorbable form. This process is called as digestion. Okay. Now these complex food materials are in their simpler form. Then these simpler nutrients are then transported to the cell for the utilization. This is the third step. These complex food materials are then transported to the cell for the utilization. This translocation or the transport of the simpler nutrients from the site of digestion to the site of utilization. Digestion takes place in the lumen of our alimentary canal. After digestion, these simpler nutrients are now translocated or transported to the lumen of, sorry, to the cell for utilization. This stage is the third step. This stage is called as absorption. This is absorption. By absorption now the simpler nutrient reaches the cell. Now within the cell, this simpler nutrients are utilized. The utilization of nutrients within the cell for the life activity. That utilization of nutrients within the cell for the life activities are called as Assimilation. This utilization is called as assimilation. Utilization of nutrients. Finally, here, if the undigested waste remains, the undigested waste is eliminated from the body after this digestion. If the undigested waste here, this undigested waste are eliminated from the body, this is the final step, ejection. Elimination of undigested waste, elimination of waste product are called as ejection. All these processes are collectively called as nutrition. Okay, so nutrition means acquiring and the utilization of energy rich nutrients. And the whole process of nutrition in complex animals includes the following stages they are ingestion, digestion, absorption. Assimilation and ingestion. What is ingestion? Intake of food. Second one, digestion. Breaking down of complex food substances into simpler and absorbable form. That is the second step, digestion. The third step, transport of digested nutrients from the site of digestion to the site of utilization. This is the third step called absorption. Then fourth one, utilization of simpler nutrients within the cell for the life activity. 
This utilization is called as assimilation. Final step is ejection. Removal of undigested waste. This process is ejection. All these processes are collectively called as nutrition. Okay. Then, this nutrition is one of the criteria for the classification of organism. Let us see what are the different types of nutrition in organisms. Okay, this is one of the criterion for the classification of organism. See, this nutrition are again classified as autotrophic nutrition. nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition these are the two types of nutrition generally nutrition are generally categorized as autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition we all know autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition here the autotrophic nutrition means the nutrition in which an organism synthesizes their own food materials. So the nutrition in which an organism synthesizes their own food materials are called as autotrophic nutrition. Such organisms having Autotrophic nutrition called autotrophs. Organism having this autotrophic nutrition are called as autotrophs. Okay. See here, these autotrophs are generally two types. Autotrophs are they are photo. and chemoautotrophs photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs these are the two types of autotrophs here photoautotrophs means photoautotrophs they synthesize their own food material by using light energy light energy used for the synthesis of their own food light energy is used they are called as photoautotrophs this photo autotrophs example green plants green plants are photo autotrophs then chemo autotrophs means they use some inorganic chemicals inorganic chemicals are used for the synthesis of their own food materials they are called as chemoautotrophs. This chemoautotrophs example nitrous monas. These are chemoautotrophs. Nitrous monas, chemoautotrophs. So they are collectively called as autotrophs and their nutrition is autotrophic. Then heterotrophic nutrition includes different types of heterotrophic nutrition are holozoic nutrition. Holozoic, saprozoic, parasitic, and symbiotic. Holozoic, saprozoic, parasitic, and symbiotic nutrition. These are the different types of Heterotrophic nutrition, holozoic nutrition, saprozoic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and symbiotic nutrition. First one is holozoic nutrition. Our nutrition is, or all complex animals nutrition is holozoic. Holozoic means engulfing or intake of solid or liquid food. Intake of solid or liquid food that may be plant part or animal part then digested within the body followed by digestion. 
intake of swollen down liquid food then digested within the body and then utilized. Actually, the different stages of nutrition are included in this holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition includes ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. So, this is intake of solid or liquid food and these ingested food materials are digested within the body of the organism. Then, this holozoic nutrition Organism having this holozoic nutrition are called as holotrophs. Organisms having holozoic nutrition called as holotrophs. These holotrophs are holotrophs. Example first one. Herbivores. Herbivores are holotrophs. Example cow. Buffalo and sheep, etc. Herbivores. Second one, carnivores. These are flesh eating higher animals, carnivores. Lion, tiger, leopard, and so on. Carnivores. Then, omnivores. We humans are omnivores. The type of food is mixed, both plant and animal part. Omnivores, humans, crow, cockroach, they are omnivores. Then, next is cannibals. Cannibals means the animals which feed individuals of their own species. Those animals which feed the individuals of their own species are called as cannibals. They feed their own species. Example, some snakes. Then scorpion. Mice. So these animals, a number of animals, and these are the examples of cannibals. They feed the individuals of their own species. Then, coprophagus. Coprophagus. Coprophagus means the feces feeding animals. They feed dung. They feed dung on feces or feces. They feed the dung or the undigested feces or feces. Feces, their own feces or other animals' feces. So the feces feeding or dung feeders are called as coprophagus. Example, the rabbit. Then pig. So there are the examples of these coprophagus animals. Feces feeding. Then Fluid feeders. Fluid feeders. Fluid feeders means they feed the plant sap. They feed plant sap. Fluid feeders. They feed plant sap. The juice from the plants. Example. The male mosquitoes. Male mosquitoes are fluid feeders. Another one. Frugivores. Frugivores. Frugivores are fruit eating. Fruit eating animals are frugivores. Example, Chiropus. Chiropus, the flying fox. Chiropus, the flying fox. The fruit eating bat. Fruit eating bat, the flying fox. It's a flying mammal. It's an example for frugivore. Then, sanguivores. Sanguivores means they are hematophagus. They are hematophagus. Hemato means blood. Hematophagus means blood feeders. 
So sanguivores are hematophagous, they are blood feeders. Example, the blood feeding animals. Example, the female mosquitoes. Female mosquitoes. Vampires. The fruit, sorry, the blood feeding bat. Vampires is the blood feeding bat. Fruit eating bat is tyropus. The blood feeding bat is called as vampires or vampira, the blood feeding bat. Then leech, etc. Leech, the blood feeders, sanguivores or hematophagus. Next example. Detritivores. Detritivores means they feed dead and decaying matters after engulfing their digested within the body. Detritivores, they feed dead than decaying matters. Dead than decaying matters. Detritivores feed the dead than decaying matters. Example, earthworm. Earthworms are the examples for detritivores. They feed the dead than decaying matters. Example, earthworm. Okay, then. Insectivores. Insectivores are insects feeding. Animals are insectivores. Insects feeding. Example frog, lizard, etc. are insectivores. Insect feeding. Animals are insectivores. So these are the different types of holotrophs. All of these are the examples of holotrophs. So holozoic means intake of solid or liquid food and after the intake they get digested, absorbed then utilized. So that, that process of the type of nutrition is called as holozoic nutrition. Okay. And that holozoic nutrition, different types of holotrophs, organism having the holozoic nutrition called as holotrophs. Holotrophs are herbivores, carnivore, omnivore, cannibals, coprophagus, fluid feeders, frugivores, sanguivores, Detritivores, insectivores, etc. are the examples of different types of holotrophs. Okay, so we completed the holozoic nutrition. Next is saprozoic nutrition. Next one is saprozoic nutrition. Let's see what is the saprozoic nutrition. Organism having the saprozoic nutrition called saprophytes. Organism having saprozoic nutrition called as saprophytes. Example fungus. Example fungus. Yeast mold. The fungus are saprophytes. See, saprophytes means. Suppose here. This is a decaying plant part. Or this is a decaying animal part. It's a decaying flesh or decaying plant part or decaying animal part. When this fungus came here, this fungus releases some digestive enzymes from their body to this decaying flesh. So fungus release some digestive enzymes to this decaying flesh. What happened? The digestive enzymes act on this flesh. What is the role? This digestive enzyme get act on here. And digestive enzyme break down them into simpler forms. So break down this complex food materials into simpler form. After the digestion, the simpler nutrients are absorbed through the body surface. This is called as saprozoic nutrition. So here the type of food is dead and decaying matters. Then how it will differ from the detritivores? Because detritivores also how they also depend the dead and decaying matters for their food. In detritivores, they are holotrophs. After engulfing the dead and decaying matter, they get digested within their body. But here, the saprophytes, what happened? They release the enzymes to the decaying flesh, enzyme from the body to outside. And here, digestion takes place outside the body. 
After digestion, the similar nutrients are absorbed through the body surface. This is called as saprozoic nutrition. Such organisms are saprophytes. So here, the simpler nutrients, after digestion, the simpler nutrients are absorbed through the body surface. This is called as saprozoic nutrition. Example, fungus. Okay. Next is parasitic nutrition. Let us see what is this parasitic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition means they acquire nutrients from host body. Example, Ascaris. We know about Ascaris is a parasite. Disease causing parasite. It causes the disease Ascariasis in man. When this Ascaris enter into the intestine of man, their multiplication takes place in our intestine. For what purpose? For their shelter and acquiring food from our body. So here, when a parasite enters into the body, they acquire nutrient from our body because we are the host. They acquire nutrient from the body, from the host body. But by acquiring nutrients from host body, it will adversely or negatively affect the host. So in our body, after the infection of Ascaris or after the multiplication of Ascaris, we are suffering from malnutrition, intestinal blockage, internal bleeding, etc. That means it will adversely affect the host. This type of nutrition is parasitic nutrition. So parasitic nutrition means acquiring nutrients from the host body which will adversely affect the host. Acquiring nutrients from host body which will adversely affect the host. That is called as parasitic nutrition. This parasitic nutrition example as caries in man. Then tinea. Tinea or perpoem. Tinea or perpoem in man is another example. This type of nutrition is called as parasitic nutrition. Next is symbiotic. Symbiotic nutrition here means, actually symbiotic nutrition here means acquiring nutrients by mutualism called as symbiotic nutrition. Acquiring nutrients by mutualism. Acquiring nutrients by mutualism is symbiotic nutrition. What is mutualism? If two organisms stay together and by this relation, both of them are mutually benefited. When two different species are came together and stay together, by this relation, both of them are, if by this relation, both of them are mutually benefited, the type of relation is called as mutualism. Acquiring nutrients by this mutualism is called symbiotic nutrition. So, acquiring nutrients by mutualism is symbiotic nutrition. Example, the E. coli, Esterichia coli, E. coli bacterium inhabited in our large intestine. E. coli inhabited in our large intestine, in our large intestine. Synthesize, they synthesize vitamin K and vitamin B complex. The E. coli inhabited in our large intestine synthesize vitamin K and vitamin B complex. See, by this relation, we get nutrients from this vitamin body and bacteria get food and shelter from our body. Both of them are mutually benefited. This type of nutrition is called as symbiotic nutrition. So these are the different types of nutrition organism, holozoic, heterotrophic nutrition, holozoic nutrition, saprozoic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and symbiotic nutrition. Okay. So we studied about different types of nutrition in organism. Next is nutrients. Acquiring and utilization of Energy rich nutrients are called as nutrition. Then let's study what are the different types of nutrients we use in our body. The nutrients are carbohydrates, nutrients, carbohydrates, then lipids, 
carbohydrates lipids proteins then vitamins water and minerals these are the different types of nutrients so the different types of nutrients we utilize in our body includes carbohydrates lipids proteins vitamins water and minerals these are the different types of nutrients we utilize in our body then here these nutrients are categorized as organic nutrients and inorganic nutrients nutrients are grouped as organic nutrients as well as inorganic nutrients see among the nutrients the organic nutrients includes carbohydrates then lipids then proteins and vitamins these are the organic nutrients so I mean these the organic nutrients are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and vitamins are organic nutrients. Then inorganic nutrients are water and minerals. Water and minerals are inorganic nutrients. So nutrients are two types organic and inorganic. Organic are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and vitamins. Inorganic nutrients are water and minerals. Then again it is classified as macronutrients and micronutrients nutrients are again categorized as macronutrients macronutrients and the micronutrients macronutrients and the micronutrients so it is again classified nutrients are again grouped as macronutrients and micronutrients see macronutrients means the nutrients which are needed for energy production those nutrients which are needed for energy production are called as macronutrients so the nutrients which are needed for energy production are called as macronutrients these macronutrients are carbo carbohydrates they are needed for energy production carbohydrates lipids and proteins these are the macronutrients the nutrients which are needed for energy production are called as macronutrients so here the macronutrients are carbohydrates lipids and proteins are macronutrients they are needed for energy production among these macronutrients body have a preference to these nutrients for energy production among these nutrients, usually body prefer carbohydrates and lipids for energy production. So among these, these carbohydrates and lipids are commonly called as the energy producers. Carbohydrates and lipids are commonly called as the energy producers. So among the nutrients, Carbohydrates and lipids are the actual energy producers. Body prefer carbohydrate than lipids for energy production. However, protein also give energy to the body for the life activity. But usually, our body use these proteins not for energy production. Proteins are utilized for the body building. So, proteins are commonly called as body builders. Proteins are commonly called as bodybuilders. They are bodybuilders. The building blocks, a structural component of our tissue or cell is protein. So proteins are used for the bodybuilding. While carbohydrates and lipids are utilized by the body for energy production. So all of these nutrients are energy generating nutrients. But usually our body prefer carbohydrates and lipids for energy production so they are called as energy producers and lipids are considered as, sorry proteins are considered as body builders the building blocks of life that is protein then our body 
first prefer carbohydrate for energy production the preference of the body to the nutrient our body first to prefer carbohydrates for energy production then to lipids if both of these carbohydrates and lipids are deficient in our body then only our body prefer proteins for energy production so in the concern of energy production proteins have least concern proteins are least concern because in the extreme starving condition only our body prefer proteins for energy production for a long starving condition or for a long fasting the body prefer protein for energy production in such extreme condition our body prefer protein for energy so usually our body first preference to the nutrients body first prefer carbohydrate for energy production then next preference is lipid if this carbo and lipids are deficient then only our body use proteins for energy production understood so why our body always prefer carbohydrates because carbohydrates are easily oxidizable nutrients so body always prefer carbohydrate for energy production then only lipid and if both of these nutrient absent body prefer protein for energy production so with this these are the macronutrients but micronutrients next is micronutrients means these are the nutrients not needed for energy production they are micronutrients they are not needed for energy production that means not needed in large quantity they are not needed for energy production so they are micronutrient but they are very essential for the regulating all the biological activity in our body they are regulators of the biological activity in our body they are needed for life activity their deficiency causes diseases so micronutrients means they are not needed for energy production so they are not needed in large quantity they are not needed for energy production but they are needed for the life activity they need all the metabolic regulators are these micronutrients example vitamin is a micronutrient they are needed for almost all biosynthetic activity they are needed for tissue repair so they are very essential in our life vitamins see for example vitamin b12 is a vitamin needed for the synthesis of hemoglobin in our rbc if this vitamin b12 is not there we can't survive we will die because of anemia because vitamin b12 is an important component of the synthesis of the hemoglobin formation or rbc and almost all enzyme action need the uh, prostate sorry cofactors most of the cofactors of enzymes are vitamins without this cofactors they can't act so they are not needed for energy production but they are needed for the life activity in our body so their deficiency causes diseases such nutrients are called as micronutrients see micronutrients includes micronutrients are water minerals and vitamins water minerals and vitamins are micronutrients okay so these are the different types of nutrients see among these nutrients which nutrient is considered as a micro as well as organic nutrient the micro organic nutrient it is a micro nutrient as well as organic the micro organic nutrient which one is a micro organic nutrient let us see my vitamin it is a micronutrient vitamins are my sorry vitamins are organic nutrient as well as micronutrient vitamins are organic as well as micro so micro organic nutrients are vitamins vitamins are the micro organic nutrients so these are the different types of nutrients next is the fuel value of nutrients fuel value of nutrients fuel value first fuel values physiological fuel value physiological fuel value and second one gross calorific value 
physiological fuel value and gross calorific value. These are the two types of fuel value of nutrients. Physiological fuel value and gross calorific value. First one, physiological fuel value means when one gram of nutrients, one gram of nutrients, nutrients are either carbohydrates or proteins or lipid, the macronutrients. One gram of nutrients, one gram of nutrients break down in the body of an organism. When one gram of nutrient break down in the body, the human body, a particular amount of energy releases. That was a 5 kilocalorie energy releases. A particular amount of energy releases. When one gram of nutrient break down in the body of an organism, a particular amount of energy releases. That energy this energy released by the energy released by the combustion the energy released by the combustion of one gram of nutrients by the combustion of one gram of nutrients in the one gram of nutrients in the body of an organism. One gram of nutrients in the body of an organism. One gram of nutrients in the body of an organism. Called physiological fuel value. So what is physiological fuel value means? The energy released by combustion of one gram of nutrients in the body of an organism is called as physiological fuel value. Okay. Another one is gross calorific value. Means same. Say one gram of nutrient break down. Instead body, the same one gram of nutrient break down in a bomb calorie meter. Instead body, here one gram nutrient break down in a device like a bomb calorie meter. It is an oxygen containing vessel, not in the body. So when one gram of nutrient break down in a bomb calorie meter, here also a particular amount of energy releases. A particular amount of energy liberated. This energy, the energy released by the combustion of one gram of nutrient in the bomb calorie meter is called as gross calorific value. The energy released by the combustion of one gram of nutrient in a bomb calorie meter. Instead body here, break down in a bomb calorie meter. That released energy is called as the gross calorific value of nutrients. So these are the two fuel value, physiological fuel value and gross calorific value. And this gross calorific value is always higher than physiological fuel value. Gross calorific value is always higher than the physiological fuel value. Okay. Let us study the nutrients and their physiological fuel value. Nutrients and physiological fuel value and gross calorific value. Let us compare this physiological as well as gross calorific value of nutrients. Nutrients we studied are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Then proteins. And lipids. These are the macronutrients. First one. The physiological fuel value of these nutrients. Physiological fuel value of carbohydrates are about 4 kilocalorie. Then physiological fuel value of proteins are also 4 kilocalorie. Then physiological fuel value of lipids are 9 kilocalorie. 
physiological value of lipids are 9 kilocalorie. Then, next is the gross calorific value. I told you, always gross calorific value is higher than the physiological fuel value. Then, this gross calorific value of carbohydrates are 4.1 kilocalorie. Proteins are 5.65 kilocalorie. Then lipids are 9.45 kilocalorie. These are the physiological as well as the gross calorific value of nutrients. Very important. The fuel value, physiological as well as gross calorific value of nutrients. Okay. So in this session we studied about different types of nutrition as well as the different types of nutrients. Okay. So thank you for watching me. Bye. See you.